I will hide. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Miniatures and Paint. This week we're coming back to you with a Dark Angels Primaris Captain. I was talking to my buddy who plays Dark Angels. I mentioned, hey, I've never actually painted a character for your army that has green armor. They're all Deathwing or what have you. What's the deal? He said, stand by to stand by and brought me this dude. So first we're going to start out just painting this dude up with our Vallejo Black Primer. Get him to a nice dark tone to start from. Nice primed plastic to start from. Then we're moving on to white ink just so we can do a zenithal highlight from the top down. That way we have a little bit of transition in his armor. Um, if we just went over it with the green, it would be cool, but it wouldn't give us the free highlights we can have. So then we come over it with the Caliban green, and we're just letting this do its magic. We're letting the darker undertone shade what's going to be dark in the recesses, and then we're letting the highlight do the work and make it brighter on top. Next we come through with Caliban Green and Warboss Green mixed one to one. I wanted this to be a little bit different of a Dark Angel's color to him, a little bit more pastel, less likely to be misconstrued as a Dark Angel. From there we add a little bit of white ink to that mixture and we're just spraying it top down, really making sure the tops are as bright as possible without going too crazy. Finally we come back through with Warboss Green, taking advantage of that white undercoat we've got from the ink being added to it and we're leaving it at its final color here. We'll just go ahead and seal this guy and we'll be good to go. So we come through with Vallejo Gloss Varnish, give him a nice all over coat. Just make sure you spray this until it just starts to look wet. If you spray it more than that, you're gonna get some drips on there. You may get a little bit of frosting on there. So just the second it starts to look wet, stop, move on to a different area of the model and get this thing fully coated down. For his cloak, we're coming through with a very thin down Xandri dust. Um, we could try and mask this off and do this with the dry brush, but honestly, it gives you an opportunity to work with thinning your paints, getting them to a proper consistency to where you can get eventually an opaque layer, but at the same time not have any paintbrush strokes in there, any sort of deformities in there. So just take your time, be careful with this, because we don't want to jack up any of our nice green, but work thin here. While we're doing this, we're also going to go through, we're going to pick out any of the purity seals around him. We're also going to pick out the Aquila on his chest. So just be mindful of that. If you don't know for sure what's going to be tan or Xandri dust color, just go through, look at the box art, and you'll be able to get the idea of what you need to have painted up. This model does have a lot of hidden detail. So the reason for the gloss varnish was this step right here. We're coming through with an Army Painter Dark Tone. We want to make sure that the wash does not reactivate the ink and mess any of that up. So we waited on that to dry. We're just coming through with a nice all over coat, trying to make sure that it gets into the recesses without actually pooling. So just be mindful of that around some of the uh, little emblems and decals and stuff he's got around his feet. We want to make sure the wash does not pull in those recesses. I will say this model is pretty well sculpted that it doesn't have any giant hangups when it comes to the actual power armor. Now we're going to start our edge highlighting with Warboss Green. Again, I'm not trying to make this thing super bright. Typically, my normal Dark Angels workup is a Warpstone Glow, then we go straight to a Moot Green. I didn't really want this guy to just be that crazy. I wanted him to be more of a matted pastel type of green. So however you want to do this, this is the way we decided to do this one. I like the way it turns out in the end, but if you want to do a typical workup for Dark Angels, your normal recipe would be Warpstone Glow and then moving on to Moot Green. So dealer's choice for sure. So now that we got the edge highlighting done, we're coming through with Abaddon Black and we're just working on any of our 
creases that is going to be black and then you have the silver components that we're later going to have to do. So we're just laying a nice undercoat of black for any of the silver components such as on his power pack, on his plasma pistol, and on the power fist. And at the same time we're going around picking out his, uh, his creases in his knees, his elbows, all of that kind of stuff. So just work careful here. Again, we're not really at a point to where this is just make it or break it. You touch the wrong thing with the paint, you're going to jack it up. No, we're, we're pretty safe. Um, if we were working over a yellow, if we were working over a white, I would say, yeah, go ahead and be afraid. That's okay. It's okay to be afraid sometimes. But right now, we're, we're relatively safe. For his cloak, we're coming through with Army Painter Strong Tone. This is watered down a little bit. We do want it to just tint the surface slightly. We don't want to just go crazy and have it tint everything. So just work fast with this. Don't sit there and rebrush and rebrush and rebrush the exact same area. Slop it down, start moving it around, brushing beside of it and moving that to where it needs to be. We are going to come through with about a billion layers to try and get this thing perfect. We could have easily done this with the airbrush, masked it off and it would have looked great. But at the same time, we're trying to work with just the paintbrush here. We're working really thin with our highlight colors to make sure that it goes where it needs to go without looking chalky, gummy, or have a bunch of paint strokes in there. Next, we come through with Mornfang Brown. All we're doing here is just picking out the leather components on the front of his loincloth and then the sides of his belt. So again, this model is very paint by numbers. It's very safe to sit here and work around. There's not anything that's crazy difficult to get a hold of have to be a little bit careful with where you throw your brush not over brushing not stabbing it and running it into his leg or anything like that the only leather component that i found that was a little bit hidden was this holster it was kind of behind the cape so we did the best we could with it at the same time though if someone is scrutinizing the model that hard they don't need to be looking at it for the gold details around the model we're coming through with retributor armor the uh, leather tassels here on the end of his loincloth, we need to make sure we get those as well as the studs on it. He's got this little lantern with skulls inside of it. Not sure what that is. We said, cool, let's paint it up gold. If y'all know what that is, hey, throw it in the comments. Let me know what this is so I can call it the proper name in the future. From there, we're just picking out any of the gold details around the model. His little, uh, I don't know, ab plate here he's got going on with a nice little gem in the middle of it. And he's got gold details on his legs, his shoulder pads, Really every single surface area, this dude's got some gold on him. So take your time, look at the box art if you need to. I had to pull it up a couple times just to make sure I was getting painted what needed to be painted. So check the box art. For the off-white details, I, like I said last video, I've pretty well moved to Grace here. This is a phenomenal color. It's got great coverage. It doesn't get chalky, doesn't get gummy. This has to be one of the best things GW has ever made. He doesn't have that many of these off-white details on him. They're just on his shoulder pads. And again, they're kind of dealer's choice on those. I've seen some of the box arts where people paint them gold. I've seen some of them to where the wings are painted this off-white color. So completely up to you. I chose to paint them off white. I think they look better and they just make the model separate a little bit more. So to start working on this cloak, we come back to Xandru Dust. No big deal here. It is still watered down. We watered it down a little bit more on top of the wet palette just to make sure we don't go too hard, have a bunch of paint strokes in this thing, anything like that. All we're trying to do is leave the recesses behind and go from there. So next step is to mix up Yushabdi Bone and Xandru Dust one to one. The reason why we're mixing colors is because essentially we're blending, right? This is all this is, is blending to try and get the nicest highlight. We're not quite glazing. So we're coming through, we're picking out a smaller surface area of what was previously picked out with that Xandru dust. So say you have 100% of the Xandru dust picked out, you come through, you pick out 75% with this mix. Next, we're going to move to Pure Yushabdi Bone. We're going to pick out even a smaller portion of that mix. The biggest thing whenever you're trying to sit here and meld our colors together is know that if you have to go back to a previous color, do it. It's not a big deal. As long as you're working thin, you're not going to leave any brush strokes. As long as you let it fully dry, you're not going to start pulling it up, reactivating it, anything like that. So give it proper dry time between each step and then just come through and change it back if you need to. If you need to go a little bit darker, maybe you want a little bit too much on that highlight, cool, do it. 
Well, we've also got this pure Ushabdi bone out. We're coming through and we're doing any of the highlights for the Aquila on the chest. We're doing any of the highlights on the Reaver helmet he put on here. So we're just going through and making our time as efficient as possible. You can see what I'm talking about here with the highlighting percentages with this Aquila on his chest. We're just leaving behind what was in the recesses coming through and highlighting up the tips of the wings on the Aquila, the tips of the skull. Same thing with the actual Reaver helmet he's got on here. We're trying to pick out the cheekbones, we're trying to pick out around the nose, around the tips of the teeth on the mouth, just trying to let this work for us without going too far with it. So take your time, nice tip on the brush, and you'll get where you're going. Next color in the mix is going to be Shabdi Bone and Screaming Skull. Again, one to one, super thin down. We're working a smaller percentage of what we already highlighted up. We're just trying to make this a nice flow from the deepest recesses to the brightest points of the fold of the cloak where the light's catching the most. So again, if you go too much, I had to do it several times on this one, back up to the previous color, bring that previous color back in, and make sure you have a nice transition from dark to light. Finally, we're on to Screaming Skull by itself. Like I said, this took me about an hour. This is not my forte. This is not what I typically do. I typically run it with an airbrush by itself. Spritz, 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 and we're freaking done. However, I want to try and get outside of the constant norm of, okay, now you just take your airbrush and spray it. Well, what if you don't have an airbrush? You are really struggling there. So this is to show other folks how to do it without having that airbrush. For the purity seals, we're coming through with Mephiston Red. No big deal here, just working careful. Um, we're picking out the actual wax portions of them and then we're coming through and picking out the casing for the plasma pistol at the same time. There's actually not that much red on this guy. If you wanted to, you could certainly go with like a corn red, totally, totally with it. It looks good, but at the same time, this is just a nice bright pop. For the ropes draped across the Aquila and also on his backpack, we just come through with Screamer Pink. No big deal here. This color has a nice coverage to it. I haven't seen really a color that it does not cover over well. So we're picking these two out here on the front, flipping this puppy over, doing the two that are holding the skull on the center of his power pack. Good to go. Next we move to Gorthor Brown. We're just trying to throw a nice highlight onto his little loincloth here. To shade everything down, we come through with our Army Painter Dark Tone again. We're just trying to put a nice thin layer of this stuff over our off-whites. We don't want to really turn this into a deep gray. We want to make sure that it's something more of an off-white in the recesses with a little bit darker in the recesses. At the same time, we come through with it on the Scrimmer Pink ropes across this chest and across the backpack. So no big deal here, just working careful. Next we come through with Lead Belcher, we're just painting any of the metallic parts, finally we're getting to this. Um, we're painting the uh, tip of the plasma pistol here, any of his power pack components. There's really not that much silver on this model. And again, these are pretty small, we're working with around stuff that we've already finished up, so just be careful, make sure you do it as carefully as you can. through with an army painter flesh wash for the golds around the model if y'all haven't heard this by now let me be the first to tell you army painter washes across the board are amazing they don't leave near as much water marking on the model and leave a very very good shade in the recesses definitely recommend those then we come through with liberator gold all we're trying to do here is edge highlight any of our metallics we're trying to just pick out the edges where the metal would glint and make it just stand out a little bit more on the back here we go to almost a wet dry brushing technique we wipe it off on our finger come through start just putting that across all the little edges on the back of this eagle crest here so something to think about vary your techniques to highlight up our rope we come through with emperor's children we're just picking out the tops of the nodules across this rope so super easy just again we're working careful To 
highlight our reds on this model, we come through with Evil Sun Scarlet. We're just trying to pick out the edges of the wax part of the purity seals and then do a little bit of edge highlighting across this plasma pistol. So super easy stuff to get to, just work it through. Next I'm going to show you all how to do a neat OSL effect on this plasma pistol just to give it that extra little oomph. So first we come through with FW's Indigo Ink. This will give us a nice dark blue glow that you can put onto the actual pistol itself and a little bit onto his hand. We want it to appear this is glowing. We next move up to Indigo Ink and White Ink 1 to 1. We're just trying to put this highlight smaller in circumference inside of what we already highlighted up with the Indigo Ink. Finally, we go to just straight up white ink, and this is the final color here. Putting a nice dot right in the middle, work it up slowly, and that'll give it a nice glowing effect to that plasma pistol. All right, guys, so here's our finished product. I think he turned out awesome. I really like the way the cloak turned out. I've never spent that much time sitting there trying to get the highlight from the darkest recesses to the brightest tips using only a brush. I always just cheat, throw it in the airbrush, knock that puppy up, and we go from there. So I'm super happy with the way that turned out. Love the way this model is sculpted. These Primaris models are getting better and better. I can't wait to start breaking into that Indominus set because that's going to be just great to paint. I don't even like Necrons and I'm about to buy that just so I can paint up these dang Necrons. So if you like something you see here, guys, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Maybe someone can use something out of it. They can put their plasma pistols on glow like this. They can try up the scheme like this, whatever the case may be. I'm with it. So, again, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for checking me out week after week. We'll catch y'all next time. Bye for now.